Dewar ma hasa khardi. Fadan ar khodu ar vuan. Um this is going to be a very different video from all the other ones that I've made so far. Um I'm dedicating this video in some way I suppose to my Latin teacher who died the 3 days ago. Uh so on the third day I am rising again. Um I won't mention her name I think in this video just perhaps for the sake of privacy for the family but um but she was a wonderful person she was a very inspiring figure both as a teacher and just as a person in herself um she had a fantastic sense of humor <laughs> the very first time that I introduced myself <clears throat> within I said 30 seconds I said to her I said, oh, I have well, an interest in, in Proto-Indo-European. And she said, oh, that's like my porn. <laughs> and I knew I'd like her then. But uh, she was a wonderful woman and she made a, a great impression on an awful lot of people. And there'll be an awful lot of people miss her. Um, so in the short time that I knew her, unfortunately, uh, I was looking forward to her friendship for the rest of my life. But uh, that's not how it worked out. Um, so this is some small uh, tribute to to her, and because she was my Latin teacher, and I also sat in in a few of her ancient Greek classes, but uh, only in the second semester, so I was kind of starting beyond my standard. Um, and this video is going to be about uh, partly Latin. Uh, I've only cobbled together a few notes, so this, uh, like all of my other videos, those of you who are subscribed to this channel, um, this will be rough and ready, but I'm only throwing the information out there, like slop and ye, my precious pigs, are coming to lap it up. Um, so, yes, uh, because English has been so influenced by Latin and uh, language, well, I don't want to give the game away, but... Uh, languages related to thought I want to talk about how in some ways uh, Latin and has influenced English so uh, linguistic relativity and moral objectivity philosophical reflections on the importance of reflecting on language uh, on with the show uh, so what is language um, now I've hidden the answer that I suspect you're going to give. So what is language? You can pause the video and think for a second. Uh, and I'm sure that quite a number of you uh, will have answered the following. Much to your shame. Um, language is a tool for communication. Um, perhaps so, but I disagree. Or I dislike that wording. Um, and of course, some figures like Noam Chomsky might say that, uh, or indeed other, other thinkers as well, uh, that language didn't originally arise as a tool for communication. Um, that was just a, a, a beneficial byproduct. Um, but then we'll have to talk about what language actually is. We'll talk about this in a second. The reason I dislike this wording, uh, a tool for communication, um, is that it implies that it, that language was actually designed for a purpose. Uh, this word, telos in Greek, we'll talk about it later, um, meaning the, uh, the an, an end as an a purpose. And of course, this is where the English word teleology, the study of purpose, comes from. Um, I think uh, humans, many humans, suffer from uh, telomania, perhaps, um, or at least a, a, an obsession with purpose. Uh, this is why. Uh, this is why I think uh, so many, um, for example, pagan religions. Uh, arose that we as we ascribe animacy to things uh, where there is none. Um, 
so we assume that language was sorry I'm rambling now um, you know what I mean uh, but is that all that language is I, so I would rather say that language is actually a, a, a system of, of organisation of, of thought I'll talk to this I'll talk about this in more detail um, unfortunately I don't plan on editing this video so there's going to be large and awkward pauses and I won't get to go into the nuance and just think as orderly as I would if I had time or the interest to write down my thoughts but anyway it is what it is uh, so is is all is that all that language is a tool for communication well as I've mentioned no I think it's primarily a uh, uh, a system of thought, but it's interesting when we look at the word language itself. Uh, language, borrowed through French, uh, comes from this Latin word lingua, uh, which itself comes from Old Latin uh, dingua, uh, where the L has, uh, or where the D has become an L. Uh, this dingua word comes from Proto Indo European, the ancestor of most languages between West Kerry and East India. Um, uh, uh, or dinque, something like that anyway dinque, uh, this of course is where we get the Irish word tanga, uh, tongue and also the English word tongue which I recommend would be spelt like this as it was in Old English and because of Anglo-Norman scribes it took on this horrible Francified um, misspelling but I'll talk about my ideas for an English spelling reform in future videos. I was planning today actually on releasing a few hours of material that I have for a very exciting video about uh, my ideas on uh, uh, Irish slash Gaelic spelling reform. And I'll be mentioning my thoughts in English as well, but I want to go off and ramble about that. Uh, this video, as I ramble away, um, is, it's, it's hard to know who the audience is, uh, to be honest, I'm not too bothered. Um, there's, pr there's probably going to be too much linguistic detail for those who might be interested in the, well, the philosophy, not that I'm worth listening to, I think for philosophy I'm only putting out my own thoughts. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to discuss the, for a second this, this word tanga, that um, we would, or one would expect uh, the word actually to be danga, uh, where this Proto-Indo-European D has survived. Um, uh, oh, I'm missing a symbol there. That should be a syllabic N. Uh, I can't remember the shortcut now. I mightn't have one. There it is. Um, but anyway, we would expect Danga. Um, so some have suggested that the Proto-Celtic word with uh, uh, T, Tavod uh, in Welsh, um, uh, is perhaps due to some influence from Proto-Germanic, where according to Grimm's law, uh, Proto-Indo-European D uh, has become uh, T. Um, but anyway, so of course, needless to say, I hope, um, the tongue is a body part. Uh, and then through metonymy, or basically, uh, well, meta in Greek, one of the many meanings meaning about so uh we 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 call language after the tongue presumably because the um that's that's the the bodily organ uh that we use to express what i think uh language is closer to being um which is in some sense, a, a, a model of the word, and I use this word saul in Irish, um, of course, related to the words uh, similar, similis in Latin, uh, where we get the word simile, um, and it itself from Indo European sim, uh, the idea of being one or, uh, oops, or uh, close to one. Um, I'll talk about this more in the next video that I have planned, but basically this idea of uh, what a soul is a, a, a model, um, and that a, a model itself is not the object that it models. There's this story by um, 
uh, Victor Borges and one of his short stories it's really only it's only half a page long really uh, de la rigor de la ciencia uh, on the rigor of science and he he talks about this map that was so large that it was the same size as the city which of course wouldn't be a very useful uh, model uh, the whole point of a model is that you abstract something um, as a new ab away tract uh, like a tractor that that drags a plow you drag something away um and i spoke about this recently uh uh the idea of well the, the word tebi in irish sorry i'm rambling but sure this is all a part of it um which comes ultimately from to uh well proto celtic to x uh uh bithio uh sorry and then the Sorry for the clacking as well, but it's just tough. Um, the idea of X, of course, meaning out. Uh, bithio, uh, the, the... Well, this gives us the old Irish word, uh, beat. Um, the idea of, of cutting something away. When we speak of abstraction, uh, it's, well, it's for those who are interested in philosophy uh, and thought, uh, when we speak of abstraction... Uh, are we talking about the thing that has been dragged away or that or to take the Irish word tebi that has been cut away uh, or, or struck away or are we talking about the thing that has been left behind um my whole point anyway is that uh as one of uh, another one of my my lecturers said uh, and says uh all analysis is reductive uh so some might challenge that um, but the, the, to, in my mind this is what language is it's a, a soul it's a model uh, of something outside of us or anything that we can perceive basically um, and just to, to mention this thought here for example uh, for people who say that language is for communication of course it can be used for that again but it, it, there's a clear difference in Irish between saying or at least in, in Kerry Irish <laughs> uh, I have Irish I have Gaelic literally there is Irish or Gaelic by me I have Irish I, I know I know Irish and which means I speak Irish I make sounds and those sounds are called Irish uh I might never again speak a word of Irish, but I would still have Irish. Uh, I, I would have Irish, though I don't speak it. Um, so language can exist, or rather, uh, the, this soul can exist. Uh, well, it's a soul a form, it's a, it's a model with sound. Uh, even if we don't use those sounds, we still have the models. And I suppose perhaps because we, we, we become so used to expressing these models all the time that we have this inner narrative. I hate that word. It's completely overused nowadays. Um, the word narrative. But anyway. Um, so one could think of language as, what I think, uh, an expression of intention. So a, a pressing out, a pushing out of intention, uh, what one holds in one's mind. Um, although some people suggest that the word ten is actually what's stretched, what's stretched inside in one's mind. Uh, I myself was initially inclined and still have a sneaking suspicion that is actually related to the word to hold, tenere in Latin. But um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. I should say, of course, that I'm. Uh, well, I I don't know what I am. I'm not. I'm not really a linguist. I'm certainly not a philosopher. But, um, well, I suppose you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a linguist than I'm a philosopher. But, uh, well, actually, in the etymological sense, a, a, a philosopher, a, a lover of knowledge, that I certainly am. Um, no, there's probably more to, to D white here. Um, 
this idea of moral relativity, I'll explain it more in detail later, but basically, um, I suppose it's quite a popular notion uh, that not worded quite as this, but um, from Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein and in his book Tractatus Logico Philosophicus, and he says, and forgive my German pronunciation, uh, die Grenzen meiner Spra Sprache bedeuten die Grenzen meiner Welt. Uh, so a common mistranslation of that is that the limits of my language are the limits of my world. But uh, a more accurate translation, uh, the limits of my language mean the limits of my world. Uh, an interesting quote, I suppose. Uh, but uh, is that true? Um, I think the most important thing that anyone can learn is to... Uh, or at least a, a very important thing that should be learned uh, is to question everything especially oneself despite the mihuness that that might the, the unsettledness that that might create within oneself um, it is good for you so is that true? I remember looking into the mirror when I was 14 years of age and uh, asking myself the, the the question what, what 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 could I use to to try to become a more intelligent person uh, um uh and one of the questions I came up with was uh unfear the hear a shin or unshirir a shin to put it in a slightly more artificial way artificial of course coming from the Latin word ars <laughs> um which just means skill uh so something done with skill artificial uh, so is that always there's probably a word there that I didn't yeah that I didn't de-white again uh, or de-whiten um, is that always true uh, can't think of any examples now I won't waste time trying to think of some but when people make statements I always say in my own mind since I was a, a wee lad of 14 um, is that always true and if they're making a generalisation then I think to my own mind, I think my own mind, well, then that, that, that point is, is vague and they should reformulate it somehow. Um, now, pushing on to, to this, uh, picking up on this word here, the difference between the limits of my language are the limits of my world, which is a common mistranslation, and the limits of my language mean the limits of my world. Uh, again, well, at least I've written down some of my ramblings to keep me on track somewhat, but I don't think ultimately it's actually going to be a great help. <laughs> anyway, so we have this word bri in Irish, uh, uh, originally a G stem, so the other forms of it should be a silent GH, which the dumbed down, bastardized, kite on the figule spelling uh, removed, but I'll be talking about that in my next video. Um, Significance, force, uh, breaver, the being energetic, um, uh, so for example, uh, kadas kadas uh, oh sorry, kadas brilish. What does it mean? Uh, what is what is a meaning with it? If I were to translate it literally, what is what is a meaning with it? Or what is that which is a meaning with it? Basically, what does it mean in Irish? Um, heal. I like this word an awful lot. Um, meaning sense or prudence. Milen uh, heal lechin. There's no sense with that. Uh, you hear some people nowadays saying Danen sheishin keel, which is not, of course, native Irish. Um, something doesn't make sense. Um, uh, but rather, uh, the, 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 the their sense with that. Um, yes, so anyway, we'll push on. But this word keel uh, comes from the, the Proto Celtic word, the ancestor of all the Celtic languages. Um, uh, uh, and this is where we get the Welsh word uh, and the, along with the Cornish word and uh, Breton word. Uh, I'm less confident of the pronunciations, so I won't attempt them. 
Um, it comes from this this Proto-Indo-European word um, uh, "quay," which means to perceive. Um, no, I could go off on a linguistic ramble for a minute or two about this. Um, I myself would rather. Sorry, I'll, I'll type in that anyway. First of all, to perceive something. Um, uh, well, I don't want to go off and talk too much in too much linguistic detail, I suppose. But um, in some sense, I would rather um, keep the the vowel as a small, uh, or uh, basically the the, the 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 vowel grade as a as a small vowel, whether as schwa or not. And keep the the syllabic sonorant. This is what this little curve under the I uh, represents. So that uh, usually in more anglicized or anglocentric um, transcriptions, you, you'd see that written as Y and this written as W. Uh, I dislike that for several reasons. Um, so I'd rather write it as I, a syllabic I, basically quay. Um, because you find that the the i is always there, whereas you can have in Proto-Indo-European e grade o grade, what's called zero grade basically, which is the vowelless version of of the word, or of the root. But anyway, um, these words, I, sorry, I should say they're not even words; they're roots, uh, because uh, unlike, for example, Proto Proto-Uralic, um, a root. Could not be an independent word in itself in Indo-European. You all Proto-Indo-European. You all uh, an ending always had to be added to it. Well, a stem and an ending. So a typical Proto-Indo-European word had had uh, three parts. But anyway, uh, so this word "keel" um, derives from this word uh, uh, "kei" or "kei" uh, to uh, to perceive. This uh, U here, uh, signifying that there was simultaneous lip round, lip rounding or, or lip protrusion, pushing your lips out away from the teeth. Uh, with this word, I myself suspect, and I'm again, this is just amateur con conjecture, um, that it might actually have been rather a, a uvular stop, so slightly deeper than not k k or k k k k, but rather. K k k, uh, but that's only a, neither here nor there, really. Anyway, um, this is where, uh, uh, well, this word kois with this uh, addition of the S, and this uh, line here is not standard notation for Proto-European. I've just added it myself to keep the, the, the I suppose, the true root separate from the, the additional consonant. Uh, meant to see or to heed and this is where we get the proto-celtic word um quiseti if i'm not mistaken i think this is also where the the this sound has become p in gaulish and uh, celtic but or sorry in the britannic languages welsh cornish and breton um and i think this is where the is it i forget now i'm trying to think off the top of my head is it uh, pishumi uh we will see i think or some form of that anyway. Um, but anyway, this this um, uh, it ultimately uh, leads to the old Irish word uh, see, uh, ad key, he sees, with the addition of this prefix here. I won't go into this. I um, won't discuss that. Um, of course, key is the normal root for see in, in Munster Irish to this day. In school, they only teach thek, uh, uh, Feck is right. Um, that itself uh, comes from an older form, uh, Feck, uh, which you still see sometimes in uh, older literal Irish, and it's still used in Scotland, in parts. Um, but this Feck itself, uh, the F, uh, is um, unetymological. It wasn't originally part of the word. Uh, without going into detail for people who are not familiar with Irish um, uh, well sometimes words that do begin with original H or sorry original F uh, can become softened which is shown nowadays by using a H 
So, and FH becomes silent. So if this were a word, it would be uh, ak. So sometimes people became unsure whether uh, when the word began with a vowel, perhaps uh, it was actually began with a softened, a softened F. So then sometimes people added on F randomly to certain words. And one of these words was was uh, in Old Irish, where the ad key uh, with here, where there's one prefix before the before the verb key, um, the stress goes on the 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 verbal part. Uh, whereas here, where we have, if you want to think think of them as prefixes, uh, you would have had first of all ni ad, uh, well key uh, over time. The the d the d c after a stressed vowel became akka niakka uh, with a long c. Um, but anyway, we'll come back and talk about that another time. Uh, this word quais to see the Proto-Indo-European word quais um, to see or to heed uh, is also where we get the Proto-Italic word quaisa uh, or quaisa. Uh, or to improve on that Z pronunciation, Quaja, probably more of a Hoji ish. Um, but anyway, this intervocalic between vowels, Z uh, or Izard, uh, became an R in Latin, Cura, which meant the care of someone. Uh, and through Old French, this is where we get the English word cure, which might be better off spelt like this, according to my own spelling system. I'll talk about that another time. Uh, similarly, you get other similar motions. This idea of, again, what is sensible to think or to to, to well to, to believe is what we have seen uh, or noticed um, as an as an empirical thing uh, no this is other roots here uh, similar meanings schistin latvian uh, it's also for the sanskrit word uh, I'm trying to think now throughout my head uh, is it chitti where the, the word for uh, thought comes from I think might be mistaken there but you can double check that uh, other similar words uh, that have exp have express uh, meaning uh, the word bonus uh, nowadays in the kai down the figule the dumb down spelling uh, which no education educated Irish speakers should use um, uh, bonus uh, which destroys, of course, the link with the abstract ending us from bono or bonu in northern dialects. Um, so I'm not even going to write the current official spelling. Um, and that's the, the basis or uh, the origin. Uh, but you could say, Nilean uh, vonu slash, there's no basis with him. There's no word for it in Irish, but you say with him or with her. Uh, there's no basis with him, yeah, meaning it makes no sense. Nilian von Oslish. Of course, the word meaning itself, and again, I'm rambling now, uh, if, I, if, if I wasn't before, uh, is related to, to the word mind. Uh, this is, of course, also related to the word mental. Um, from Latin. Uh, mensa, all these words, um, and I have a slight, and it's just me being pedantic, but uh, when we say, of course, it's it's a common expression, a colloquial expression. Uh, what does that word mean? But really, of course, to be very pedantic. And I recommend you do be um, pedantic. Uh, that um, words themselves don't have meaning, if you stay with me. People have meaning uh, and, and give that to the word. Uh, if I see a word written down itself... Um, well, pick, pick any word you want, it doesn't matter, anyone here on the page. Uh, that it's that itself doesn't have meaning. It doesn't have a mind, if you like, if you think about it etymologically. Um, all 
that this written symbol is, of course, is a reference to the sound, right? Roughly speaking. Um, and of course, the word refer, re in Latin, back, fer to carry, related to the word bear. Most most of the time, when you have a word with uh, f in Latin, uh, it usually goes back to an older uh, breathy b uh, or a breathy d. Uh, that's how they're symbolized in standard Proto Indo European notation. Um, what was my point? Oh, yes, so that. These written words are references, basically something that points back to or carries back to the sound. But the sound itself, as in the word, uh, is a reference to the soul, the, the mental model that we have in our heads of the world outside us. Um, so th that's how I understand meaning, if I were to use it in a pedantic sense. So, for example... Uh, why do some sounds refer to meaning? So, for example, music doesn't refer to a mental model of the world as such. Uh, but, well, I don't want to say anything that I might disagree with um, myself. But you, you get what I'm talking about anyway. It is late now and I'm getting, getting tired. But I'll ramble away anyway. Um, one other thing, actually, that I, I might as well mention. Uh, I, I slightly, well, uh, slightly, I do dislike the term mental health. Uh, again, mental being the Latinate term, we might as well use the English term mind health. There was a, a say, a Dutch physicist, or a physician, um, Jacopo Molleschot, and one of his quotes is, uh, the brain produces the mind in the same way the kidneys produce urine. Uh, or another version of that quote says the same way that the liver produces bile, but the one with urine is a bit funnier, I think. Um, so in the same way that we, sp we speak about mental health, we'd be better off actually speaking about brain health. Um, you often hear singers, for example, saying, oh, my voice is sore, uh, rather than saying my, my throat is sore. That would be like saying my sight is sore, rather than saying my eyes are sore, or my hearing is sore, rather than my ears or my eardrums or whatever are sore. Um, and I, one of the reasons I dislike the term mental health is that we forget that... Um, Ultimately, that derives from the brain. We're just speaking about someone's brain configuration and how that is, is causing them, uh, and perhaps other people, uh, harm of some sort. Uh, but it is a physical thing. It's brain health. We'd, we, we'd, we'd, be, we'd better talk about it, I think. Um, what, how long has this gone on? Uh, Anyway, it's probably going to be quite a long video. I'll ramble away anyway. Um, so, uh, the relationship between meanings... Uh, yes, so I mean, there is this thing, of course, of semantic drift. Semantic, just, of course, referring to uh, a Greek-derived term for the word meaning. That's all it means. <laughs> or that is all that is meant by it, actually. Again, I should follow, follow my own... Uh, admonitions um, so what is yeah rather than saying that what does that word mean uh, it might be more accurate it might be more realistic uh, to ask what is meant by that word because at least then the meant by at least implies some agent who, who means something who has a mind um, but anyway this idea of semantic drift the basically but a, a, a word's uh, what is intended by a word is changes over time. So, for the word meat, originally just referred to any to any uh, food. Nowadays, it means specifically uh, flesh, animal flesh. Um, so, as I go deeper and deeper into this video, and it's going to take more and more time, um, I will be talking about 
and as I've already spoken about, uh, etymologies, etymology is just the, 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 the true origin, I suppose, of the word, the truth of the word. Um, we do well to bear in mind that uh, an etymology is not a definition, and I mean definition in the common sense, um, as an, a dictionary definition. Um, of course, uh, a word is in some way uh, defined by its past in the same way that, okay, you might hear some vague kind of Disney American uh, uh, comments where, you know, your past doesn't define you. Well, of course your past defines you. Uh, it's, a, it's a part of the story of your life. And once you have done something, uh, you, have, you have limited the, perhaps, uh, or within a range, you have limited the infinite number of things that you could have done in the past and haven't done. You chose, or, well, you did one of them. That, by definition, has defined the word finis, Latin, finish, has put a limit to the, to the thing, to the things that the story of your life contains. Um, again, just talk, talking about my thoughts on different words uh, and, and usages. Um, so yes, an etymology is not a definition, as in uh, what is meant by a word nowadays is not, of course, necessarily what it, what was meant by a word in previous times. Um, but of course that in itself I think is, is a, a, a worthwhile thing in studying um, how the intention of people changes over time and the thing that they use to express that intention that is the word um, so I do think etymology is so although it's not a definition it is uh, food or fuel uh, for thought um, and this is, and I might as well say it at this stage as it occurs to me, that there are other people who would be many times better at this game of reflecting on etymology than I am. I'm only a, an amateur in the etymological sense. Ama, amare in Latin, to love. Um, people who know more languages, people who who know the who know the etymology of more words. Uh, would be better at this game, though I see a few people doing it, but anyway, so uh, I'm not sure why this thought occurred to me at this stage, but here it is anyway. Uh, the importance of an uh, of an artificial international auxiliary language, uh, basically a, a made up uh, language, though all languages are made up, it's just some, some of them we're, we're aware of when they were made up. Um, uh, Again, artificial, Latin ars, skill. So artificial, mm, for some reason, well, and I, I know the, some of the reasons, but uh, this word has acquired negative connotations in, in modern English, but uh, unnecessarily so, I think. Uh, again, we would do well to, to, to remember its origin, or its at least its earlier meaning of relating to skill. Um, auxiliary, just meaning extra, of course so basically a made up language that for international use uh, I'm all in favour of that uh, not Esperanto um, I did come across one recently by a Finnish linguist and it seems the most promising uh, uh, I won't talk about it here but um, Esperanto is too bi biased towards Latin uh, of course there are other ones Volapük uh, Lorsban, Loglan, and so on. Um, but there is no, there's no reason. Uh, and this is the thing. Uh, probably the same people who who would stand strongly, or who who would give first the the, the definition of what languages is, and to offer communication, uh, would also probably be the first people to be opposed to the idea of actually, con if language is a tool, we might as well use the the. The more suitable tool for the job uh, and design it ourselves um, which certainly isn't a, a, a natural language suppose, uh, well, without going into the etymology of the word natural yet um, I'm starting to, to weigh now a bit as it gets tired um, or as it, exactly as it gets late <laughs> 
Um, but I'm all in favour of English being replaced. Uh, Russian, uh, Spanish, Mandarin, Arabic. Yeah, replace them all with this a single pop, properly, intelligently designed uh, artificial international auxiliary language and this auxiliary part is, is uh, important. Uh, it's not there to uh, replace any particular language. Uh, it's there uh, in uh, addition uh, to be used. Of, of course, um, this is, well, I'll talk about this in a while when I come to the, the word, uh, I think, so for example, people think, oh, wouldn't it be easier if we all just had one language? Uh, well, it would be easier if we had a language to communicate with each other. Um, but I think it would be unwise uh, to remove uh, information that that's what language is. Uh, why just be you know what's called um additive uh bilingualism or or uh or uh, uh multilingualism i suppose um basically where you learn other languages and just add on to your languages and then you have uh, subtractive uh, polylingualism as happened in ireland where people learn one uh, another language so the irish people learnt english and then stopped using irish uh, that's that's a, a bad thing. That 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 makes people less informed or less intelligent. They have they have fewer forms in their mind. Uh, but anyway, uh, this kind of stuff doesn't need a script. But it's not, not, not going to stop now. Um, so one one thing that I'm interested in, in this question of artificial international auxiliary languages um, is what's the minimum level of arbitrariness or that, that a, a language can have. So how many things, what's the, what's the, the, the smallest number of things that are, that are there just because, full stop. Um, uh, I won't talk about my ideas here, but we do have to start with numbers, I think, which is interesting. Um, well, actually, I might as well talk about it here. Um, I, I, we we need this concept of edit or a, a, a amount, um, and of course that's that's related to, uh, well there are numerous proposed etymologies for this word edit, um, but this this other words relating to the word amount this older word uh, rive where is where we get the word rive with a, a computer uh, or more cor correctly a, a calculator I suppose of well, it was of, of dates of when Easter was going to be and so on. Um, this word Reeve itself, if, I'm, if I can remember the Proto-Indo-European root, goes back to, is that H, no, 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 H2 or um, E, I, I think, uh, where H2 has become uh, A, and this is where we get the Greek word arithmetic, uh, this uh, are here um, and there are the other languages or other languages as well other derivatives from this protein European root uh, re, the, this thing of number um, perhaps somebody who knows better than I uh, uh, I thought for a while it was an interesting thought that it occurred to me that this this idea of, of, of thing in Latin um, race um, that it may have been derived from this root as well, as in that a thing is something quantified, uh, something made a number of. Uh, but off the top of my head, I think it comes from... I have this word in my head for some reason. Um, and it's also it also has some derivative or some reflex in Proto-Indo-Iranian. Um, where it just means goods, um, uh, uh, goods as in, well, this is the thing, um, a, 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 a number of goods, uh, and I wonder is there any re is there any uh, 
phonological reason why this word in in uh, proto Indo Indo Aryan and um, this root Frey. Sorry, I'm getting very tired now. <laughs> um, couldn't why why this word couldn't actually be derived from that? Perhaps there is a reason, but I, I don't know enough about the other branches of Indo European to 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 say off the top of my head. Um, right. So on to the next thought as we ramble away. Um, the reason that I'm interested, or one of the reasons that I'm interested in etymology, is that English is <laughs> poisoned, for want of a better word. Um, I mean, is it's roughly sixty percent of English vocabulary ultimately derives from from Latin, most of it via Old French. Um, but. Uh, you often find that, and of course some people intentionally use obs obscured language to perhaps to seem more intelligent than they actually are. Um, I would much rather use uh, f familiar language, people language that you, that you can explain something to a child with, or someone who doesn't who isn't familiar with, with basically who doesn't speak a. a a different language, Latin, even if those words are used in English, it's still an, an unfamiliar term. Um, I've mentioned before in my other videos this concept of uh, foreign, of course, uh, the correct spelling of which would be something like that, or perhaps with a silent E. Uh, but that that comes from, uh, uh, is it, I can't remember if the A is long or not. Um, I can't remember, but uh, that itself, I think, well, uh, comes from uh, door, the idea of something being outside, or door, this is where we get the Irish word doris from, of course, the English word door. Uh, but, um, what was I saying about that? Oh yeah, so basically, you're using, if, when you use Latinate terms, uh, for the most part, not always, because of course often the, the Latinate term has completely replaced the the, the non-borrowed term. Also, I dislike the word borrowing in a language. Uh, a language doesn't give that word back after a certain period of time. Uh, imitated would be a, a better term, an imitated word. Uh, but I often think that um, that, that we hide the truth on ourselves. Uh, so yes, do, do, does a hi does a thinker hide the truth, which is singular and non-contradictory? That is, that is a, a property of the truth. That anything that has internal inconsistencies uh, is not true. Um, and the, the truth is itself can be thought of as being one singular, coherent, sticking together, coherent um, thing. So do do we hide that singular non-contradictory thing on ourselves uh, by using a multiplicity of words, by using many words? So for example, um, just one example, in English often says the same thing with different words. Uh, English kingly, French royal, which itself derives some Latin uh, regal, whatever. Um, but this happens all the time and I do find it strange, and I want to talk about the the translation industry, uh, with Irish in particular, um, not in this video at least, but I do find it strange that some people think that modern concepts uh, can only be expressed using ancient terminology. Um, as if all 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 complicated thought uh, can only be expressed in Latin and ancient Greek. Uh, that, of course, is nonsense. Uh, but it's just con continuing a, a tradition. Um, I might as well say it out. Um, English, of course, I think one of the the, the primary characteristics of uh, the English people, uh, or at least a large share of them. Is that they're they're absolutely obsessed with 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 social class, 
Um, and this, of course, Latin and ancient Greek have always had some prestige. Um, and of course, it became a fad then, of course, to, to add as many Latinate terms into English. And that that is just a tradition that has carried on for centuries. Um, but anyway, I won't, won't go into too much detail there because I'm getting tired now and I don't want to say things that I don't really mean. Uh, so, finally, <laughs> however long I've been rambling, probably for an hour or so, I don't know, <laughs> it feels like it. Uh, linguistic relativity. What is linguistic relativity? Uh, the suggestion or the theory that a person's perceptions are related to that person's language. Um, this ties in with, with the, the quote from Wittgenstein, um, the the limits of my language mean the limits of my world um but linguistic relativity is more commonly known as uh, the sapir whorf hypothesis and i'm sure there are a lot of people uh, they usually hear this from americans or english people who uh, probably who have dropped the h shame on you and the english have dropped the r even more shame on you um so they probably aren't used to hearing it as the sapir whorf hypothesis but anyway um so that that basically that 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 our language or 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 well again what do we mean by language do, do we mean models with sound or do we just mean the models themselves the mental models um that our perception of the world is is limited um by those uh by the by the words we use by the models we have in our in our brain in some in some capacity I would imagine it would have to be so uh, now you have what's called the strong version often called uh, linguistic de determinism uh, again uh, terminal the, the limit of something the finish of something um, in that it completely determines what we think uh, a more weak version which I accept in some in some regard um, the, 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 the soft version of it um, and again it's of course you may have noticed I underlined the word related uh, this is what uh, relative means when you when we say all things are relative um in some regard all things are uh, related somehow they all have one u unifying thing uh, even if that one unifying thing is is an ab uh, something abstract so i got have to plug in the old charger here he didn't come for the high tech and i'm sure the people who, the people who did come expecting a high tech video have left long ago um no right there we are plugged in again okay now one also hears of uh, moral relativity and this is where this is the probably the thing that i'm most interested in um morality uh the word itself derives from latin morali or moralis uh, relating to manners or morals basically to, to, uh, manners in the sense of uh, what people do as a custom that's all it means what people usually do and it was first used by Cicero to give the classical pronunciation uh, or Cicero or, or I'm sure the Italians among you Cicero something like that uh, it was first used to translate the, the ancient Greek um, uh, now etikos of course, all the modern Greeks would be saying that's not how it's pronounced. That was closer. Uh, this theta, of course, being t. Um, this is an interesting etymology in itself. Um, again, uh, uh, this ethikos, or sorry, I won't get this right. I don't. My ancient Greek now wouldn't be great. Um, ethikos with the stress on the course, but this comes from anyway. Uh, uh, so this Proto-Indo-European root sue, um, no I can't remember if there was a laryngeal there or not, but this sue root uh, refers to the uh, the, the self, um, this is, this sue is also of course where we get the Irish word uh, fain from, and as the thought occurs to me, uh, some forms of uh, Thane nowadays are often pronounced Hain in certain dialects, and I wonder. Um, one often sees it spelt F H E for the I N. That is a misspelling because F H 
uh, is silent. If you mean hain, then at least write it with a H, but what I suspect is that it actually comes from an older form, uh, possibly hain, where we do find that um, CH in certain clitics of sorts, although whether hain is, uh, hain is a clitic or not is arguable. Um, so, for example, the word hana uh, already um, uh, for certain dialects, uh, hugum towards me, and so on. But anyway, that's this this word self. And this dech uh, root, uh, I can't remember which original is there. Um, but th this is this is the English word, or the, sorry, this is the uh, means to, to to give or to to set. Sorry, to to sorry to 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 put in a particular place. So originally, what this swedech uh, would have meant is uh, what what one sets as one's own. Um, as in that that that's your custom that that's what you yourself do um and, and that's all that that model means uh, now uh this might be go to show that the ancient greeks and the uh the romans were uh, moral relativists of sort as in anything goes you do you as the americans say um I'll come back and talk about this in a second as I gather my thoughts. Um, um, yes, so moralis is just a, a form of this word mos, and I wonder is that related somehow to the Irish word mos? Um, the other word base or bias in, 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 in Munster Irish, um, possibly deriving from the uh, bansus. Uh, and, but anyway, I'll come back and talk about that, that later. Um, this word mos itself, the, a manner of a custom, uh, possibly deriving proto well, in, deriving from Proto-Indo-European uh, moch or mech, meaning to intend, to be intent upon, to be of strong will. Um, this is where we get the ancient Greek uh, uh, my oh my, uh, to strive for something, and perhaps also the ancient Greek uh, mosha, uh, the muse, uh, where is where we get the English word music. Uh, again, uh, this moh root is where we get the English word mood, um, and this note, uh, it has been conjectured that some senses of moh, such as those having to do with manner and way, may indicate a possible derivation from Proto-Indo-European med uh, to measure. And again, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in terms of quantification. Um, the idea, the idea of measuring or, or quantifying something. So, uh, when when people when people speak of the word morality, of course, commonly what's understood is that there's some sort of goodness involved, whatever that, without actually having any concept of what are the behaviours, what are the 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 models, if you like, um, of that particular behaviour. Um, for that reason, I would actually rather jettison uh, the word morality to do without it and to, to, to use perhaps a, a word as, as simple as goodness um, and then simply to define what we mean by, by that word goodness. Um, but anyway, moral relativity, uh, and this is my own slightly snide uh, definition, um, anyone who is a moral relativist uh, thinks that moral judgments are true or false relative to a person's likes or dislikes, which of course I think is a bizarre concept. Uh, something is true whether you like it or not. Uh, it is, it is, the English cognates, um, so which means that each person has the ability to, to decide what is and was and shall be present in time or space, which seems like a, a, a bizarre ability to ascribe to anyone. Um, no, I can understand why people might find the the idea of moral relativism comforting. Um, it's because there are no we 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 are able to keep control. Uh, whereas if moral morality is objective and I, it is, <laughs> um, that th that we lose that control of the things that we should do. Um, uh, it's like 
well, someone doesn't get to decide whether, whether something is going to give you, whether smoking is, go, is going to give you lung cancer, for example. It, 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 it just it simply is likely to increase your, your likelihood of, of, of getting it. Um, there's a, an interesting book that I've, I've yet to read, but, and I probably won't read it because I'm, I'm not a fan of fiction. Um, I'm not a fanatic of fiction. Uh, to use the full term. Um, the Ones Who Walked Away from Omelas uh, by Ursula Le Guin. And the premise of this book it's, is that um, these people live in a... Now, this is a, a distinction. Most, well, everyone uses the word utopia, uh, which, of course, in ancient Greek meant no where, no place. But what I talk about, and I probably won't have the time to discuss it in, in too much detail, uh, what I would rather refer to, uh, although unfortunately uh, the pronunciation is the same in English, is a, a, a utopia, which means a good place. So I don't, I wouldn't describe myself as a, a, a uto as an utopianist, but rather as an utopianist. Um, there's a difference, and uh, this word. Uh, eu in, in, uh, derives from this uh, um, Proto-Indo-European root uh, so, where actually we get the Irish word uh, so, uh, meaning something that is, is good or something that is possible uh, uh, sonus versus donus um, uh, sona happy or well-born originally versus dona and so on um, where the positive form has so. And interestingly, and I'll probably talk about this in a while, I'm going to have to stop this video definitely, I'm only, what, I'm only two pages in. Uh, I might have to make, make a series of this. Um, <laughs> not that anyone would want to watch it. Um, yeah, but it's getting very late now. Um, but this word, uh, yes, so, uh, where the, the laryngeal, which was probably a, a he, as in, uh, well, what I think is that it was probably an ich laut, but again, I'm not a specialist in Indo European, so my opinion isn't worth listening to really. Um, this hi sound, uh, yes, uh, hi sound. Uh, in, in, in Greek, what you find is that this hi, this laryngeal, became an, an e, and that, of course, uh, well, that the, the S became uh, uh, debucalized is the term um, to H and then eventually became lost and that's how we get the, the, the Greek word EU which is now often pronounced F in modern Greek but anyway so that, so I am an eutopianist not an utopianist um, sorry no, I'm rambling um, in, in this book uh, people live in an, this perfectly happy place um, but they find out at a certain age that the serenity and the 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 whole system is is is, is kept running um, by torturing a, a, a child until that child dies um, and at that stage, when 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 the the teenager or whatever has has been told this, they have a decision uh, to make: Are they willing to uh, tolerate the suffering of uh, one person uh, for the happiness of others? Which I think is a disgusting idea, I must say. Um, and those who those who decide that it is acceptable, they stay in Omelas, and those who want no part to play in it are the ones who walked away from Omelas. Um, sorry, I'm not making my points as, as clearly as I would like if I were a bit more awake, but um, anyway, I'll ramble away for another couple of minutes. Um, Democratia, yes, I suppose, uh, so I just jotted down these ideas, no particular order. Um, 
demos, of course, in, in, in Greek means the, the common people. Everyone is now unfortunately familiar with the word pandemic, which pan meaning all, demic meaning all people. Um, that it affects some, that something affects all people. Um, so then demokratia is ruled by the common people. Um, uh, it's, it, it, it certainly seems that it's the, the best, and I'm reluctant to use the word best, but I won't go into the details now. Uh, I'd rather use a quantifiable term, uh, or at least a, a term that refers to something in time and space. That's what reality is. Reality itself, race, as I've already mentioned, uh, being a thing so reality is thing thingness people now have this awful expression is that a thing or well, they, they don't have a dental fricative when they say it is that a thing but anyway um is that real that is what reality is is, is it a thing yeah. uh race again the, the latin word for thing but anyway uh democracy the rule of common people uh really what it is of course is a majoritocracy to um, perhaps that word has been coined before <laughs> uh, so I won't take any credit for it but unless of course I'm the person that has coined this term majoritocracy uh, a ru being ruled by the majority but of course the majority sometimes might not know uh, what's good uh, and I use this word good I didn't really okay actually I, I, I will ramble on for a bit more um, okay Moving on to the idea of moral objectivity, um, meaning that we can, well, that 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 morality, or rather, what what is good, uh, is something that we don't get to decide, but that it is something that we that we can discover, that it is something that we can know about. Uh, this word "skio" uh, in Latin, meaning "I know." Uh, uh, this is where we get the word "science." And I always like to remind people that uh, we should make a distinction uh, between science and what seems to have become science with a capital S, as in uh, bio biology, chemistry and physics. Um, all the word science means, or <laughs> perhaps it was originally meant by it, was the word knowledge. Uh, so the, we can have, of course, biology, chemistry, and physics were were called the natural sciences, the the knowledge the knowledge of nature. Um, I would rather go back to a term like that, knowledge. Uh, we are all science. Well, <laughs> perhaps some people aren't, uh, but in the, in that a, a a a a linguist is a a language scientist. Um. Skio. Uh, this word itself um related to the word sick if i'm not uh if i'm not mistaken uh, or sick in 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 the european the idea of cutting something up or dividing something up uh into i suppose maybe manageable bits or as psychologists uh like to say nowadays chunks um Yes, so the, the, anyway, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought now, it's getting late. Uh, and I'm not going to edit this video. Uh, this Greek word, uh, in ancient Greek, sopos, uh, modern Greek, sophos. Uh, people aren't actually sure where this term comes from. It's possibly related to the uh, Latin sapiens, as in homo sapiens, the, the knowing man. Or, yeah. Um, uh, this is where, uh, of course, this is where the word philosophy comes from, philo or philo, uh, meaning love, a love of knowledge, um, which again is is a, uh, for those who, who who try to use words in their etymological sense, which I imagine are very few, um, a philosopher, uh, a lover of knowledge. Uh, one can love something and not uh, have any particular information about that thing. Um, of course, the word sophist nowadays has negative connotations. Um, but basically, a, a, a knower. A knower. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm going to push on and try to finish this. Although there's loads to talk about. 
and actually this is really the interesting part uh, okay I'm going to push on for another while and I'll stop then um, so one of the things that I'm inter- perhaps most interested in uh, my underlying philosophy to misuse uh, in the etymological sense uh, to misuse the word philosophy on, mor- on morality or, uh, or ethics or goodness is to raise the minimum amount of happiness of the least happy person or again perhaps I, there's no reason to limit that to a person or of the least happy sentient being and again sentient uh, relating to the word sense anything that can sense something uh, these are all physical uh, configurations if you like dopamine vasopressin oxytocin serotonin and all these have a role in what most people would uh, honestly regard as happiness now one can argue about semantics the meaning of words and say oh I'd rather be content than happy but at the end of the day reality is a thing that exists in time and or rather space first and time and the the words that you use must refer to something outside uh, your brain they, or they, they must refer to, to, to some configuration of reality some physical configuration when you mean good what is that f- physical configuration when you use that word good um a few people would d- deny uh, that there's no such thing for some reason people seem content to deny the idea of, of moral objectivity but they don't deny the concept of health um uh, and again worth mentioning the the or re-mentioning the idea of mental health better being replaced by brain health uh, again because the the brain i think people think of the brain as being something more physical than the mind uh, uh not sure why i mentioned this here rationalist versus versus empiricist um rationalist of course using uh reason uh if i can remember stephen pinker's definition definition off the top of my head uh, is it the use of knowledge uh, to achieve a certain goal? Um, empiricist, the idea of uh, we know what we observe, or probably to, to, to broaden that slightly, we know what we, we, we perceive. Um, picking up on this point of raising the minimum amount of happiness, as in bringing about the certain... Uh, certain physical uh, configuration for all sentient beings um, this term speciesist it was popularized by this man Peter Singer I, I strongly 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 advise uh, reading and listening to what this man has to say um, I, 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 yeah well I think I'll talk about the word uh, culture uh, perhaps in the next video because I won't continue with this but uh, I think it's a pity that people like Peter Singer aren't more popular. Um, but I think it was actually, was it Richard Ryder uh, originally coined the term speciesist, but it was Peter Singer's book Animal Liberation um, that, that popularised it. Uh, this video, if you're interested in animal liberation and the concept of speciesist, you might want to watch Earthlings. Now I find it uh, myself a bit... Uh, would I say it tries too hard to to pull on the the heartstrings um but it's probably worth watching anything that you disagree with is is worth engaging with um so this for example i i well i try to be vegan it's very hard in a shit old country like ireland um since i also think it that it's morally objectively wrong to cook <laughs> not perhaps i'm just lazy um but people are, you know ask this question uh, why don't you eat meat i think that's a very illogical or foolish question to ask um since the number of things that one doesn't eat is infinite i don't eat well you, you can imagine why i don't eat uh, wood uh, why i don't eat coal um but the, uh, again, there are an infinite number of things that 
there are an infinite number of things that we we don't do um whereas there there's a limited number of things that we do do uh <laughs> um so more logical to ask about the presence not the absence of an action or a thing so it's better so i always rather uh to give a well a, 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 a carry a, a carry answer is a question to turn it around uh why do you eat meat uh perhaps it's just a well of course it's obvious it's just a a religion of sorts it's 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 the custom and that's what people do without without questioning it um again of course this idea of of positive evidence uh related to the to, from the 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 um indo european route uh uh wade uh to see often written like that in more anglo centric transcriptions uh of course the, the v in classical latin was pronounced as a w but this is this word uh, evidence the idea of seeing something uh though i suppose we, we would nowadays use the word more more broadly and that we can have evidence from other senses as, as well so positive evidence uh, the evidence of what is present not what is absent uh yeah uh that's an important thing that you always have to we can't rely on on negative evidence uh when making an argument you have to provide the 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 proof the the positive evidence of for your claim um right around the way um should the objective goal of utilitarianism be happiness uh yeah i put that question there and i'm probably too tired to to start discussing it now um yeah i'll i'll move on um of course there's this idea of of depressive realism where uh, and again remember that real related to the word thing or meaning thing in latin um that people who are depressed uh well it's interesting part of the scene is that people who are depressed have a more uh, accurate uh modeling or image of or idea of reality actually it's interesting the word idea in greek uh probably comes from widea uh this same in the european roots the idea as an the idea of what an idea is is something that you see and and imagining and again image of course is something to do with the sight because our, our, our i suppose our, our primary uh way of knowing things uh, is related to to or for the majority of people is is through sight and again this word key in irish keel sense intelligence it's interesting how it's all connected this is the point of this video <laughs> yes there is a point of this video um that depressed people have more realistic images of uh, or more realistic ideas about the world except when it refers to themselves it would seem um i don't know why i've put this here again depressive anti-realism what might that constitute uh anyway I'll push on uh now jeremy bentham of course uh his famous adage uh, the greatest good for the greatest number of people uh i suppose as the basis of a of a, a moral of a, a goodness system um that of course after a few seconds thought i think can be seen to be quite a dangerous system uh what if 51% of people are made happy by making 49% of people uh, horrifically miserable uh so this is why i think uh, perhaps a, a safer uh a safer uh model of goodness or to follow uh is is this to raise the minimum amount of happiness of the least happy sentient being uh so that 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 the, the least happy person uh is actually happy not saying that we all have to be equally happy but that the, there is at least uh, to quote michael de higgins uh, a great man um a social floor below which no one would fall um that everyone has a house to sleep in uh, enough food enough water uh 
and, and, and perhaps more than that, but um, of course we still live in a world, even in Ireland, uh, due to our, our wonderful politicians, um, deeply moral people. That's sarcasm for anyone who doesn't can't detect. Um, that we still have homeless people in Ireland, in other parts of the world, we still have people who can't afford food, uh, enough food. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, ma. Uh, this word ma itself goes back to an Indo-European root, uh, mech. It's also where the word uh, uh, mature or matura in Latin comes from the idea of something being, having come at the good time or at a good time that it's it's now good to eat, I suppose. Um, mechtis. Uh, there is a word matis in Latin. Um, but this idea of utility, uh, it's of course, it's connection to the word use. Uh, it's interesting in Irish, if we say something is useless, we say it's gone va, without good. Um, but uh, I think an, an interesting challenge to utilitarianism, as in that uh, should what sorry I'm getting very tired now uh, this is like the very first video I ever put up <laughs> of my new series it was made at 4 o'clock in the morning um, but anyway an interesting uh, challenge and that's also a word that's grossly misused nowadays uh, to ut utilitarianism is the utility monster this challenge by uh, Robert Nozick, or Nozick, um, and the idea behind the utility monster is that um, we'll say that w with a limited number of resources, that the utility monster is able to get more good, more use out of these number of this limited number of, of resources. Um, then the other individuals would say so that uh, certain individuals might only get three points of, of goodness out of something whereas the utility monster might get a hundred um, and that by utilitarian claims uh, the, the, the greatest good uh, in a quantifiable sense uh, um, would be uh, best served by giving the utility monster everything and letting the other people suffer. That's not a system, I think, that anyone would would want to live in. And again, I think this is a, a, a much better system to try and bring about to raise the minimum amount of happiness of the least happy person. Um, so that, we, we, that basically that, well, people forget that we can have negatives and positives and nothing uh, in the middle uh, as a neutral. That is what neutral means, neither the word neuter and neither being related um, so that basically that we have no one on the negative side of the scale uh, that everyone if not equally happy which is an impossibility I think um, <laughs> um, that they, they're, they are at least uh, on the positive side however low um, right I'm getting very tired now uh, but I, okay, I'll, I'll finish this point because it's interesting. Um, so reality, that which is true, that which exists in space and time. Uh, it's interesting, this word exist, you'll notice the ST. Uh, this is uh, related to the English word stand. Um, the idea is something that stands in space and time. Uh, this concept of mobile S, uh, the in proto Indo european root being uh, death with two I think um, so for example this is where we get like the word status and so on blah 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 um, but of course this is where we also get the Irish word ta for being for standing in a particular position ta uh, he is there he stands in it uh, and what's this it what does it imply well presumably in 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 reality he stands in reality in in space and time uh, it's interesting, space and time, of course, being uh, dimensions. Um, this word mention itself, or dimension, related to the word mens, as in a measure. Um, 
I should have probably mentioned this earlier, but anyway, as I, as I said, I'm just throwing this out as, as slop and you can make, make what you want of it. Um, but of course, this is why I say that actually mathematics in a way, and perhaps there are many physicists who would agree with me that, that mathematics is the foundation of everything. Um, it's interesting, and I'll mention this at the end, although I'll, I'll probably have to make it in a, in a separate video tomorrow, um, that, uh, well, the, 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 the role that certain physicists think that, um, that mathematics have and how, how, how fundamental mathematics is, uh, can we have a concept of space and time without having a, a concept of measurement? Uh, or, or, or quantification um, the word me itself perhaps uh, related to this word uh, this root that I mentioned uh, along with good which also referred to size um, <laughs> perhaps related to the idea that bigger is better um, but from this we, we get words like mensura, measure uh, me of the Irish, um, mind in Welsh, the amount, and so on. Uh, and here we come to uh, a very important point, and it's uh, I suppose uh, uh, I put onto another page because I think this is quite intensive. Um, a cornerstone of my own thought process, and I always encourage people to think about this. There is a very clear difference in Irish, and this relates to moral objectivity, a very clear difference between under the smallum, the thing which is good with me, meaning the thing that I like subjectively, and under the smadum, the thing that is good for me, whether I like it or not. And that, of course, then, so the thing that is good with me and the thing that is good for me, we then have to have a concept of what this ma is, uh, okay we can we can look at its etymology uh the, the idea of of being good we can only go back so far uh, of course that, that this is the problem with etymology uh we do have to stop the etymologizing at some stage and remember what a, a word actually is that it is a reference to reality um so and again reality is made up of t time and space it is me measured in that um, what configuration in reality are we talking about when we mean good? Now we can be wishy-washy and airy-fairy about it and say, oh, we don't really know. Um, or you can actually take moral, you can take suffering seriously um, and and th think about this question. Cut the smahal, what is good? So, for example, one in Irish, one in, in, in Irish a person in Irish can say, Ismailim vehegeish uh, I like to be at listening with music. I like listening to music. I like to be uh, looking on films or uh, on games of sports, sports games, whatever. Or um, I like to be reading fiction. And again, I've used the pre-standardized spelling here. The the dumbed-down spelling in the Kaidana Figul wrongly implies that the pronunciation of monster is liav. Uh, where E for the A before a, uh, a, a non-palatal consonant or a broad consonant is pronounced as Ia. Uh, this is the official spelling taught in schools. It's uh, moronic. Um, of course, it's interesting, the word fiction, in fact, derived from the same root. Uh, uh, fact, the, the English word fact from Latin factum, uh, uh, something that has been done. This um means a thing. Um, that has been done from the root facere. Uh, this is, of course, to make or to do, where we get the uh, the word factory, manufacture, um, and also a word that I was going to mention later. But the word perfect. Uh, nowadays, we we use the word pe perfect when we mean flawless. But a, a more etymological uh, me, uh, use is, of course, per meaning through or th uh, throughout entirely. When you go throughout something, you've you've gone through the entire thing. And uh, fact, it's absolutely fact. It's fact entirely. It's done all the way through. Uh, uh, 
and of course presumably such as a, if you were working on a writing a poem or a piece of music or whatever uh, when it's when it's done entirely it presumably means that you've <laughs> you've done it to your satisfaction and that it, it can't be improved anymore uh, or it might just mean that you're you're sick and tired of it <laughs> uh, perfect yeah um see I'm, I'm not too tired to make puns um anyway uh under the smadum yes capitalism now i know it's become a bit of a cliche to be opposed to capitalism but actually my own uh, slight opposition to it uh, is that it is sorry uh, based on the thing which is good with people perhaps without an eye to the thing that is good for them uh, of course it seems like a preposterous uh, proposition to some people to suggest that you might know better for them than that person knows for his or herself um, which is a bizarre proposition I think that I mean of course some people know better this is why this is why we, we hire builders and plumbers and carpenters and doctors and so on uh, because some people have knowledge that we don't uh, and we can have knowledge about anything that exists um, so you know you can, you, you can offer parenting advice to parents and say you, you shouldn't do this um, but anyway uh, in, of course in the word should uh, related the, 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 the proto-Indo-European root is skel uh, meaning uh, an obligation of sorts so you were obliged morally perhaps in goodness to bring about this certain physical configuration of goodness whatever that that may be um, so th this is one opposition to capitalism that uh, of course now Stephen Pinker f f raises the point that would you rather live in uh, societies that call themselves communist or societies that call themselves capitalist capitalist um noam chomsky might uh, well suggest that we don't there is no such thing as capitalism that it couldn't possibly exist and that we kind of all live in in uh, capitalism light <laughs> societies um uh in the west anyway at least uh or in the west i also hate that term shame on me uh anyway this this concept of kadasmal ladinif kadasmal dorinif and notice the the use of nice uh, dative plural don't say goodbye to it yet um but of course people are opposed or frightened very frightened by this idea that there is a onrudas madam that there is a thing that is good for you that you should do and of course uh, uh, quite a normal way to say you should uh, you should do something in irish is bavagat it would be it would be good for you to do whatever um that person is is making an, an objective claim of course um which may be true or false um but there is a thing that would bring about uh the the, the, the physical configuration that would raise the minimum amount of happiness that any sentient being would feel uh, so for example is x a waste of time is listening to music a waste of time why listen to the, why listen to that music this piece of music and not another um you know what what could you have done in the 40 minutes of listening instead of listening to a brahms symphony uh or watching some two and a half hour film or watching an hour and a half long game or reading a massive tome of fiction um what could you have learnt about reality and about uh morality about goodness uh, in that time because all these all these moments that you spend doing these things uh, all add up the the 40 minutes and the hour here and the hour there um, all in a way missed opportunities to acquire information and I might as well mention it here that uh, two things required perhaps at least to be wise in formation um, is required to be intelligent um intelligent itself inter uh, lego in latin 
no, Lego can mean I gather together, um, with similar connotations perhaps of the English word gather, as in I gather that so and so was there, um, or that I read between, similarly like in English, I read between the lines. So to be intelligent is to be able to tell the difference between things, to recognise that they are not the same. Um, but of course, in order to tell the difference between things, between forms, you have to have the forms themselves in your mind, in formation. Um, so it, there is a, a moral imperative, to borrow a word from Kant, um, to, uh, I, I think at least, and I may be wrong, um, to acquire information. But then of course, what information, what, what do we inform ourselves with? What, what, are we, what are we forming in our brains? Are we forming it with things like music and watching sport? I mean, I can understand the, 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 the impulse to play sport, but to watch sports, mm. uh, music, reading fiction, why not read about, well, this is the thing. Because you might say, oh, I like these things, a smile meal. They're good. They're good with me, subjectively. But of course, the logical thing to do for us then, I'm not saying that I do it. You, anyway. Um, but is it possible to learn to like the things that, to learn to like the things that are good for us? Uh, can we change our predilections um, and we can to some extent, I think. Um, so is, is X a waste of time? Any one of those examples, listening to music. Uh, and I, I would never say that these are absolutely useless. But again, we can quantify them. Uh, uh, was, you know, you spent seven hours watching a, a Wagner opera listening to a Wagner opera or performing brain surgery, which of those was... <laughs> this just seems preposterous. Uh, which which of those seven hours would be better spent? Erin, no, I, I can't come in that day. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, is X a waste of time? Uh, that, of course, is framed as what is called a polar question or a binary question um, or a... a a question that has two expected answers um, and I say expected answers is X a waste of time and you could answer chicken um, though perhaps some might expect that answer to that question uh, so yes no end of discussion um, yeah, the, the, there is a reason why uh, non-polar questions, so questions that don't expect one of two answers, uh, are also called information questions because they give you more information uh, about reality. So rather than asking, is X a waste of time? Uh, it might be wiser to ask, and I always encourage uh, people to, to think like this, um, how much of a waste of time is X? 0% to 100%, these things can be quantified. Uh, again, measured, this idea of dimensions being measured in time and space and so on. I don't know why I wrote these words down here. Ducare, in Latin, to lead. Uh, like Mussolini, uh, il duco, the leader. Um, an aqueduct, something that leads the water. Uh, and this is where we get the word education. Uh, ex ducare. Uh, educare. To lead out, X meaning out, uh, presumably to lead out of ignorance, and ignorance mean, meaning not knowing, uh, of course a metaphorical usage. But we need information, um, we need information to, to lead ourselves out of, of being ignorant. Uh, one can talk about other things, people... The, the relationship between information, intelligence, and, I don't know, knowing what's best, whatever. I'm starting to get tired now. Um, the want, yes, so again, just reflecting on the word want. Uh, of course, the earlier meaning was lack, um, as in, which you, you often still sometimes hear, there's a want in him, there's something lacking. Uh, not all there. 
uh, or the, 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 the phrase waste not, want not. Uh, if you don't waste something, you won't lack it. Um, so people often, of course, it's, it's quite normal English nowadays to say, uh, I want whatever, ice cream. Um, iced cream, <laughs> which it was the earlier form. Um, which, uh, I suppose, uh, strictly speaking, of, or if one thinks like this, means that, or th we're thinking etymologically, means that you, you lack this thing. But of course, it's possible to lack something and not desire it. Uh, I desire ice cream. Uh, we don't desire everything that we lack. Um, uh, but people now say, uh, I want you to shut up, or like a recent habit of Americans, I need, um, which seems to greatly overstate the case, as Americans tend to do. Um, need actually probably related is what's the uh, I forget which number Laurentian now uh, possibly related to the word now as in uh, related to the word die uh, but that's what it means now um, Americans seem to overuse this word a lot I need rather than I want or you should or you must you ought to whatever uh, how long have we been talking now two hours I'll ramble away still um, so, what is the truth? Perhaps this should have come earlier in the discussion. Um, well, it's interesting. Uh, uh, an older word that has, has nowadays become obsolete. Sooth. What is sooth? Um, this is interesting that sooth and is, as in what is, both originate from the same protein European word that I mentioned earlier, actually. Uh, oops, what am I doing with my life? Um, so, to be, um, or at least the the ches root, at least. Um, so, in other words, what is suit or modern true is what is. Again, notice the is root, um, or what is or what is there uh, in time and space. Uh, so of course something that it, that can't be perceived in time and space, uh, other than the referent itself. So for example, we can refer to uh, Thor, the, the the Norse god. Uh, of course, we can refer to that to Thor as if it were as if he he were uh, there in the real world. Uh, but really, of course, it just it just exists in the minds of people. It doesn't exist outside the mind. Um, so the 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 what way would I put it? The referent, the thing that refers to the concept of Thor, exists. But the reference, as in Thor himself, does not exist. <laughs> it's a, that's an important distinction. I think the the difference between, uh, of course, this is found in semiotics. The uh, the referent versus the meaning the the uh, well what I often say in Irish on 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 rud lena dagrahar the 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 thing with which one refers and the uh, so on on tagart I suppose would be, that's the the word I use for that in Irish tagart whereas the on um, the reference the thing to which I refer uh, if I can coin a term uh, I think. Uh, Fuckload that I that I e uh, uh, has come up with this term tagaran. I dislike that word. I would rather nominalize the idea of uh, the verbal adjective tagarha, uh, having been referred, and to use that as a noun itself on uh, the reference. So the referent and the reference. Uh, so th this is the means. Well, again, the the thing that refers, and this is the thing referred to. Um, it's important to distinguish between the things for which we have references. Sorry, that we have reference, but not uh, references. Uh, but what's interesting is that this word "suit," uh, this older word of meaning, what is true, what is, um, has a noun, or sorry, has a verb. Uh, related to the word soothe. 
as in what is true is soothing if only you would accept it um which is interesting that from well, a phonetics point of view that uh, this silent e of course has a what i often what i will mention in my next video na saul gor rudgan faim rudgan fuem don't imagine that something that doesn't have a sound doesn't have a function so this now silent e uh, quiescent e has a function in that uh, intervocalic th uh, what was earlier th has become th so the noun is 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 breath but the action the verb is breathe with a th and notice the the effect on the vowel as well uh, a thief with an f but the verb thieve, which might be better spelled like that in an English spelling form that I've talked about in future videos. So the same thing with sooth, the truth, and sooth. It's it's interesting to to reflect on, on how the word sooth has come to, to mean that from meaning something that is true or what what, what is. Um, this goes back to older English, uh, well, old English. Uh, do I have thorn set up? I do. Sought and that from... Uh, uh, earlier uh, uh, sans and so on um, uh, going back to chesont in in the European chesont I think I can't remember the ending um, but it's interesting that uh, this word uh, sooth or sunyo uh, so in Proto-Germanic sunyo or sunyo uh, meant truth um, but that this is the origin actually of the word sin um in in, in english uh, so that if the idea of of course that i suppose that someone being perhaps truly guilty or there are other arguments as well um but it's one might question that if sin is or was uh, considered bad was the truth or, or the suit considered bad was the lie better than the truth uh, old Norse we have uh, sin uh, meaning refusal uh, perhaps it acquired its negative connotation uh, by countering a charge with the truth but but not being believed and that your your statement of the truth because it was ultimately led to an, a negative outcome uh, came to be the, the word acquired negative connotations um old high german uh sunna or zunna i'm not perhaps it didn't have a z at this stage i'm not sure uh, someone can tell me in the comments uh, legal obligation but of course this brings to my mind at least the the idea of a moral obligation to observe the truth and act accordingly in relation to the moral objective uh i'll tear away when I'll, I'll keep going um this is probably in the wrong place but well I, I, i'm going to jump a paragraph first actually uh the difference between true versus suit as in a soothsayer someone that says the truth um originally the word true which again in my spelling reform that might be a, a, a better spelling um from old english these different forms uh ultimately from proto-european um uh, which means steady or firm uh we get the Czech Slovak word drevo, uh, the old well Irish uh, died or uh, darach, uh, oak tree, where the word uh, dara comes from, um, and of course through Grimm's law, where D became T in the Celtic language in the Germanic languages, this is also where we get the, the word tree, the idea of something that is firm, which brings to mind uh, Martino Dirón's poem uh, Biedchrom. Um, so compare the old Irish uh, Darv, which uh, I would spell D-E-R-V or D-E-R-W, um, um, again deriving from this, this root. This is where we get the modern Irish uh, Darv, meaning certain or sure. Uh, again, th th this implies that the truth is steady, it's firm, it's something that can be relied upon whereas you can't rely upon lies and fiction. Um, but that there then might be 
of course, a difference between, well, sorry, I, I, um, I take that back, uh, that there might be a difference between true, being true, and being suit. As in, the suit is what is there, regardless of whether we like it or not, or whether we, 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 we perceive it or not. Um, whereas true is simply what is functionally reliable. Um, it might not be true, but the lie gets us through the day. Um, through the day. Um, uh, it would at this stage, I think, be too difficult, and perhaps of no benefit anyway, to, 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 to revise this distinction, but here I am talking about it. <laughs> um, Yes, and I mean, people talk about, uh, well, okay, I won't go off and talk about that because I'll only get too rambly. Um, but again, this idea of, of something that is not not actually there in reality, but we act as if it is because we think, or because we, we gain some benefit from it, versus actually what is there. That That's according to my understanding. Um, it might be worth mentioning this this uh, word uh, "cree" in Irish, or in uh, 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 Ulster dialects, "cree" with two syllables, which it can't be read from the bastardised form in the Caidona Figule, "cree" as taught in schools. Uh, this is a better form. Uh, my own spelling is actually that. Um, but anyway as in my, in my spelling proposal that I'll probably make my next video about. Um, the word heart, of course, you can see that, uh, again, in Germanic, the Proto-European K has become a H, and that the, the D has become a T. Uh, uh, Czech, Slovak, Srce, uh, Cardia in Latin, um, so we we speak of cardiologists rather than of heart doctors um again surely they serve the same function uh, other than this particularly english uh, idea of of uh, our obsession with class and and uh, wanting to move into a different register so the, of course the cardiologist exists in a different register from the heart doctor, um, though the real world referent, or sorry, reference is the same, the thing being referred to is the same, but the referent is different, the thing we use to refer. Uh, Cree is interesting. Uh, the word credev, which means belief or religion in modern Irish, um, ultimately deriving from this proto um cred uh, cred um, am I pronouncing that correctly? Not that many people will care or notice. Cred uh, Kieti, something like that. Uh, to, to, well, if I write out the actual Indo European form, possibly a lower vowel. Uh, breathy voice, I don't have that set up. Oh, I do. Well, we'll, we'll put it above it. Uh, my own opinion that H1 was here. There, we go something not too far from this um which if we if we break it up into its roots uh cred death uh, uh putting uh, sorry i should uh, probably do it like that uh which originally meant to to put one's heart into something as in to use one's heart rather than one's head one's brain um and it's interesting that several Indo European languages have roots like this. Uh, the idea of, of belief having to, having to do with one's feelings, uh, though of course uh, feelings and thought are very closely connected. Uh, rationality, ultimately, we use rationality to serve our feelings, uh, but we can also scrutinize our feelings according to rationality. Um, Plato's idea of what is knowledge as opposed to, to, 
to belief, uh, justified true belief. Uh, I won't say much about that. Okay, I'll, I'll push on. Um, Jesus, this is a very long video. Um, I, I have the other... <laughs> this is only nine pages of material. I have... <laughs> I've written 140 pages for my next video. <laughs> It'll take days. Anyway, um, fear, of course, the, the modern word for true. Nowadays, the, the saying in, in We Know Veritas, sorry, I skipped the accents, uh, there is truth in wine, or as often stated in Irish, Lauren Farag agus fiin fear. Anger and wine speak truthfully. Uh, Although it is probably worth also mentioning, nor um, nearly very sorry. Uh, no, the vein and brain are stig, being in heal mo. Again, this word heal. Uh, when the drop does be in, the sense does be out. Uh, referring to alcohol, of course. Uh, another vice. Uh, anyway, uh, fear. Uh, uh, Proto-European uh, Wechros or Wechros with this Hoshi S Wechros uh, ultimately from the, the root uh, uh, Wech or again I would rather uh, it be uh, written sorry okay, I'm going to forget that never mind Fekin shortcuts huh? um, uh, Fek it anyway Right, never mind. <laughs> so we can compare the Proto and the European um uh, which became Proto Balto Slavic. Uh, uh, I won't be able to do the little subtitle but we uh Proto Slavic uh, Viera, faith or belief. So it's interesting what has has come to mean true in one language, as in or perhaps again true or suit, perhaps. Um, has come to mean faith or belief in what is true uh, in the Slavic languages. Uh, this word, the, of course, the word for truth nowadays in Irish, fyrne, uh, um, from this word fyrian, uh, just or righteous, plus this uh, abstract ending, uh, ness, um, again, which is an interesting parallel of something being. That the 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 truth is something righteous. There's something just, some something that we should we should strive towards. The truth. Uh, an interesting thought. Uh, well, I thought it was interesting at the time, but I don't think it's true. Um, I was reflecting on the etymology of the word fearn, and well, this is what I can find according to the sources. But there perhaps are, are other explanations for it. Um, with this double N, uh, there is this singulative, is meaning marking out one thing, uh, ne, as in uh, gran, uh, again from a, a common Indo European root, but then that a, a single grain, perhaps, grana, no, it, that word can mean other things, hatred, it's also a person's name, beautiful name. Um, but uh, grana, um, the idea of, of a single grain, and you know that made me think about the idea of the, the singularity or the oneness uh, of truth or reality. Uh, the the that truth or reality is unitary, uh, in the sense that two opposing or contradictory statements cannot be true. Uh, the etymology of the word faith, lads, this is going on for ages. Um, ultimately from Latin uh, fides uh, from Proto-Indo-European bade uh, I should mark it with the standard notation I suppose um, which ultimately means to, to command, to compel uh, to persuade, to trust uh, these different uh, words deriving from it uh, well it's interesting this word bias in Irish custom may or may not be related um, a trusted custom perhaps who knows uh, 
Proto-Slavic Begiti, where we get these other various words. Uh, anyway, we push on. Um, so that faith is something that compels you, or something that you trust, or that you're compelled to trust. Um, now, another can of worms, oh my god. Well, if this has taken me, what, two hours? I'm going to be here for another two hours. Uh, is there such a thing as free will? Uh, there is such a thing as the referent. The, the word, the term free will exists, but the reference to which it exists, I don't think exists. Uh, what exactly would it be free from? The, the laws of physics, is it? Um, now, toil uh, in Irish, meaning will, so, for example, le toil with your will. Ma se da hoile, if it is your will. Uh, it's interesting, uh, the use in English, I will do it. Uh, this will, of course, being meaning I wish to do it. Ultimately, this distinction has been lost for the most part. I will do it, I shall do it. Uh, of course, presumably, the original distinction was that this you desired to do it. Uh, Sorry, well, the spelling is irrelevant, those ones, but uh, don't hate me, but this is a, 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 my suggested spelling for the word will, I'll, ex uh, will, I'll explain it in a, another video. Whereas the word shall, or perhaps it should be marked somehow, other, um, implies obligation, again from this Proto-Indo-European word, uh, or root, I should say, a skell meaning obligation, something that you're obliged to do. Again, uh, this may be a distinction worth maintaining or reviving. Um, of course, it's not clear now it is, but it would be a nice spelling, or at least more clear. Um, the relation between something that I, I will do and something that I would do, and the, the, the distinction between that, something I would do, and something I should do. Um, of course, nowadays we imply this sense of obligation. Uh, people might say in Irish, uh, or, well, if we change the person, um, uh, it would be good for you to do it. It would be right for you to do it. It would be just for you to do it. And again, it might be re worth reflecting that the, the word co uh is related to this word co, co -ir, equally true. Um, or at, le at least related to the word weir, true. Uh, now, so people who think that there's such thing as free will, uh, ultimately I think people who believe in the concept of free will end up being um, crueler people. Uh, because they think that our actions are somehow that we, we, sorry, I'm too tired now to, to, to make in, in, uh, intelligent points, but basically, or make complicated points, but um, the question I would ask is, how is will, a physical product of the brain uh, and other body parts, <laughs> uh, somehow free from the laws of physics? How, how, could, how could the, I, of course there's will, but how could it be free? What exactly is it free from? Um, so, for example, uh, 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 if you see a, a, a drug addict uh, on the street and you walk past and you tot tot and you, uh, or a homeless person, you say, well, what did that person, that person had free will, that person made that choice. Um, well, of course, as Robert Sapolsky and again, along with Peter Singer, and Peter Singer strongly recommend, I think, a very uh, a decent man and someone I'd like to see. Well, of course, he is very popular. I'd like to see him even more popular. You should look up his ideas on free will on YouTube. He, he explains them much better than I could. Um, um, well, I, I, I'm a d determinist as such, as in from the Big Bang, how every single moment was contingent uh, on that happened was contingent on the moment that happened previous that and so on um 
uh, basically we're, the, we're just, reality we're just watching a clock tick out as such it, it couldn't be any other way okay people might like to make the distinction say that, and say that we don't have will or sorry we don't have free will but we do have agency we can agent in Latin in old Irish we can drive a change we, we don't just throw in the towel and say oh we can make no change we do have agency um but our, our will is, is governed by physical properties. So, anyway, Robert Sapolsky and read his book, Behave. Uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, stop believing in free will and you'll become a, a more intelligent, uh, kinder person. Um, the, the, yes, right, moving on to this idea of... Uh, Okay, people people say that basically we are machines. Um, I go off on a little story. Uh, I once was writing a long paper, whatever, and couldn't bring myself to write the paper, uh, and I ended up finding this uh, well, enormously greatly enjoyable. Uh, documentary that was made in Dutch television back in the 90s you'd never get the like of it in television nowadays uh, not that I watch television not that I own a television uh, you shouldn't watch Netflix <laughs> um, called a glorious accident where they got six uh, scientists if you like and interviewed them individually and then for the seventh episode brought them all together for a three and a half hour talk you've been listening to me for almost as long um, to discuss ideas and uh, I highly recommend it it's, I, I, I watch it every so often uh, and I always learn something new from it uh, perhaps because I'm stupid that I didn't learn it all the first time um, now I don't want to bias anyone's opinion uh, but so but I'll, so I won't mention any names but one of the figures uh who, on the whole, I would probably, well, disagree with the most, but I also found him, in some regard, the most interesting figure, because he raises this point that uh, we often, well, nowadays, when you, when you, when you start talking about, uh, well, if you don't use the concept of free will, you probably end up use, referring to people using mechanical terminology that we are machines which we are in in, in some regard um, but it's worth thinking about that um, you know why not refer to it he, he raises the point that that it's very uh, anthropocentric very human based um, to, to talk about machines in that uh, only humans make machines um, and he suggests that this word organism no he wasn't a linguist uh, but I, it's, uh, I did find it a very interesting remark because of course the word organism comes from the this the proto-indo-european root uh, uh, werg I can't remember if that was palatal or not uh, possibly not but anyway um, this is where we get the the an organism as an or a, an organ of the body, a musical organ, something that does work, a worker, and of course, uh, some of you may know that the word robot, uh, coined by Karl, uh, will I have the, check yeah, uh, Chapek in the uh, was in the the book Ruhr, uh coined the term robot, but of course all robot means is worker. Uh, an organism so all organisms as such do work and that might spark some uh, some those of you who have an interest in physics or a knowledge of physics this uh, this concept of work as well um absolutist i don't know how i put that word there um yes so th this this mechanical model uh why not talk about it as as an as an organism of uh, which of course all things are as such anything that works what is work then uh well i don't know i don't know my my, my physical my physics definition of 
but um, presumably something that moves in time and space. That 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 is what what work is to, to uh, in some philosophical sense. Um, again, returning to this idea of moral objectivity versus moral relativity, uh, closely connected, it would seem that people who are moral objectivists tend to come down on the side of uh, uh, sorry nature and moral relativists tend to come down on the side of nurture uh, I won't fudge the points that Stephen Pinker makes in the book The Blank Slate The Modern Denial of Human Nature um, again I think a very kind hearted man actually um, and that he he can understand, and or he, he you know he 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 writes about the reasons why people might be moral relativists, with the idea that if things are, are mutable, uh, if 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 humans are just a blank slate and we can write whatever we want in them, then that takes away, uh, well I suppose the 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 idea that, um, some people, are are born, with, uh certain qualities in in greater quantity than others but again that assumes that uh, inequality between individuals is somehow a basis for harming those individuals it, it, it starts i think especially if one follows my idea of raising the minimum amount of happiness that any sentient being feels uh, but of course this also reminds me of the irish shanuckle the proverb is um, that uh, one's one's nature is stronger than one's nurture. Um, yes, okay. This again, this idea of inequality and the, the, this fear of inequality. Uh, anywhere where there is differences, well, I actually don't like this word hierarchy because it, it does. It does refer to the idea of rule, but there is a, a, a structure of, how would you call it, uh, of non-equality, perhaps inequality, um, or non-identicality actually might be better, uh, as in, well, this is this is, raises the interesting point of the, the word, that be, the way people use identity nowadays. Um, idem in Latin meaning the same uh, identity meaning the quality of being the same so when you identify something um, you realise that uh, entity A is the same entity that did action X whatever um, A equals A um, of course that's not the way that people use the word identify nowadays uh, though that is uh, complicated I, I, I don't want to venture into that um, not yet anyway <laughs> um, but of course identity uh, an identity card is a card that shows that you are the same person the same idem person that the card claims um, uh I don't know why I put this quote here. Whereof one cannot speak, thereof one must be silent. Uh, I suppose I'm using it in a slightly different context here. Um, yes, I'm. I think that might be a good place to to end at, at that point. I, there is there is more uh, to come where I actually reflect more on uh, certain. That's probably why I put it there, the whole idea of shutting up. <laughs> um, so the next part of the video, well, it's certainly going to be shorter. But in it, I just reflect on terms that are, are commonly used, like the word identity nowadays, uh, hierarchy, things like this, um, and discuss their etymology, uh, just continuing along along the, the, the line, more or less, of what I've been doing. So this is the, probably, well, obviously now it's, it's become the first part in the tribute to my Latin teacher. Uh, again, I'll, I'll leave her name unmentioned, but she had a, has had a, a, made a lasting impression on me 
um, and certainly opened up uh, in the short time that I, I got to, to spend with her as a student. Uh, opened up a world of, of learning to me that I think I will, that I, I certainly would like to continue to develop throughout my life. Uh, though as the poet Kathleen Maud said, Ni fisk am I, I do not know how long I will live. Um, so this is the first part in the tribute to my uh, Latin teacher. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this ramble. <laughs> the wildest, the wildest of ramble yet. Uh, and there's more to come with. There's another three pages of material. But uh, I'll, I'll leave it there for now. If I can figure out how to stop this recording. <laughs> or start it. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs>